Hey, what have these guys got? Ricky, can you make out of an old spray bottle? I'd spray I can. I choose you. Yay! So what are your names? My name's Alex My name's Adran. Nice to meet you guys. And where are you from? London. Well, it's a great suggestion. I'm going to go and grab a few bits. Wow, loads of stuff today. So I've got my spray bottles that I've filled up with paint and water. I've got some modelling clay and some sticky tack. I've got a piece of cardboard that I've cut into the shape of a skateboard. I'll tell you why later. And I've got just a sheet of card here that I'm going to draw my design on. I want something from the sea. Fish? Yeah, I'm going to go for a fish skeleton. So I'm going to start by drawing a triangle-shaped skull. So do you guys like to do art? Yeah. I like to create things like bookmarks. I like to write stories. So that's perfect. If you write a story, you can then make a beautiful bookmark to save your place. Yeah. Do you want to see my fish so far? I'm going to cut this out because it's going to be my stencil. Now I'm going to cut out the eye of the fish. So to protect the table, I'm putting a little bit of modelling clay down and I'm going to poke a hole with a pencil so I can get my scissors in there. There we go. Now I've cut it out. OK, so I have my fish now cut out. Wow! Now I'm going to hold my fish on the cardboard with a little bit of sticky tack. And I'm using small blobs, pushing down the sticky tack so it's stuck nice and flush. Using my fish as a stencil, I am going to use the spray bottles to make a graffiti skateboard. I'm going to start spraying over the skateboard. I put a big bit of card down here to protect my table. So if you're doing this at home, I suggest a big bit of newspaper. What's your favourite colour? Purple. Well, that's good, because I'm going to start with purple. I've mixed together paint and water to get it to just the right consistency that it will spray out. Here we go. The great thing about this is you don't have to be too neat. My favourite colour is green. And currently this colour green. Now I'm going to move on to yellow. That is bright, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I want my skateboard to be super bright. Black pink. Let's have a look. <laughs> That's my favourite colour too. So this is all your favourite colours then. I reckon you'll like it. I've got one colour left. Orange. That's looking pretty good. Now I need this to dry, and I'm going to use my ninja skills. <sighs> there we go, lovely and dry. I've got a couple of finishing touches I want to do. I'm going to give it a black outline, and this will really make the colours pop. Around to the other tail. There we go. I'm going to turn it over. So I've got some fizzy drinks cans that I've painted with paint mixed with PVA glue, so it sticks to the metal. And I'm going to stick these to the underside of my board to be the wheels. And now, finally, for the reveal, I can peel off my fish to reveal my custom grip tape job. And this is kind of beautiful art all on its own. So, you guys ready to see it? Yeah! What do you think? Look at that. Yeah! Would you get on board with this at home? Yeah! What would you score it out of 10? 10! Oh, wow, look at those lovely 10s! You know what? I'll hang it on the wall. Thanks for your suggestion, guys. You've been brilliant. Bye-bye. I don't often have time to stop and take in my art, unless it's stop frame animation, like Hi. this. Hey, Ryan Rich. Hi. <laughs> cool dance moves. What's that? I've heard of dancing on the ceiling, but that's ridiculous. To make this laid-back animation, you'll need a tablet or smartphone with animation app, some interesting terrain, and a friend. I'm cheating a little here. This is my friend Claire, and she's a contemporary dancer. And you can put it together in just three ninja moves. Ninja move number one. It's time to look at our world a little differently, because we aren't going to be animating on our usual plane. Look for interesting areas on the ground. Things that don't seem exciting from this perspective might be great to animate on. And remember, you don't need to worry about gravity. 
So your character can jump really high or even fly, because they're not really in the air. Ninja move number two. Now you've got interesting places to animate, it's time to start thinking about your choreography. Work with your animation model to work out what you can do. This is where my model really comes into her own. Ninja move number three. It's time to start shooting. So what I've done is I've attached my smartphone with animation app to this fun little rig here. Now if you don't have fancy rigs like me, you can simply use a selfie stick. Okay, we've danced around the park, mm -hmm. we've shot all our frames, and I've added some cool sound effects. So I think it's time to take a look at our mini masterpiece. <laughs> I think you've got some ninja dance moves. I don't have any toys to calm the baby down. And this is no place for a baby. I mean, look, I've got a pair of my old socks lying around. It has given me an idea, though. I could make the Art Ninja Cute Critter. So we're going to take one of these socks and turn it inside out. I'm going to lay it down with the heel facing the ceiling. And with some scissors, I'm going to cut down towards the heel. I'm going to stop about that blue line there. I'm going to make that strip about two centimetres wide. And the same on the left. These little strips in the middle, cut those out. Now I'm going to sew along these edges here, and these are going to become the ears of the cute critter. But to help hold them in place, I'm going to use some pins. Just makes it easier to sew. I've got some thread here. I've doubled it over like this tied knot in the end. And I'm going to start sewing along the line that I've pinned here. You need to be careful if you're using a needle or get an adult to help you. And needles are definitely something babies should not be using. Just doing a very simple sort of tacking stitch just going over the edge. Keep sewing. Now I'm going to take out the rest of my pins. Now the reason I sewed it inside out is because when I turn it back around the right way, the stitching will be really tidy. Go. Now I'm going to stuff these ears with a bit of toy stuffing. And you can get this stuff from any good craft shop, or you can use cotton wool or old socks or anything soft. Push it in the best you can with your fingers and thumb. Sometimes it's easier to use the end of a paintbrush. Great. Now I'm going to get a really big bit like this. And this stuffing is going to be for the head. So I'm going to start stuffing it up in here. Now the reason I've used the sock in this way is because the heel becomes a perfect face. Look at that. Put this to one side for a second. I'm going to start making the arms. So with my other sock, I'm going to cut about two centimetres away from where the heel ends. I'm going to cut all the way down here to the pink elasticated part of the sock, about two centimetres wide again, and again on the other side. This is going to need stitching, so I'm going to use my ninja skills. There we go. Now I just stuff that. Now I need to sew those up to keep all the stuffing inside. And it's easier to do that by turning it back inside out. The actual elasticated bit now, just fold it down. This is to tidy it up, keep it nice and strong. And I'm going to sew that up now. Snippy, snippy. Turn it back in the right way. And these are the arms. This will hold in the stuffing in the head, as well as being like the neck and shoulders. Now I'm going to get another big bit of toy stuffing make the body. That's the belly there. Now it's going to sew along underneath to hold all the stuffing in. Tie that off again. Now I'm going to make some legs. I'm going to snip up here again about two centimetres from the side and I'm going to leave a tiny gap before I get to the stitching so I've got a bit of material that I can fold in and stitch and I can cut those two flaps out the middle. 
Now I need to sew and stuff as I go along with these legs. Because I can't turn them inside out, I'm going to try and roll in the edges and do a little hidden stitch. You OK over there, Vicky? There you go, it's looking great. But it needs a face. So I've cut out a few bits of felt here. Now I'm just going to stitch them on. Now for the star eye. Now for the mouth. There we go. I think it looks great. My cute critter. I think baby Vicky will love that. You didn't have to make yours gnarly like mine. You could try these other great ideas. Baby Vicky sounds a bit grisly. I'd better go and amuse her. Here's a quick art tip. How to draw a Japanese-style cartoon character. Now I'm going to start with her head, and that's going to be quite a bit bigger than the body. Nice big round face. I'm going to add some hair. Little spiky fringe. And as these characters are always quite cutesy, I'm going to add some bows and a couple of bunches. Now onto the eyes, and characteristically, they're quite big on the face. Like that. And then nice big pupils with reflections. And I'm just doing a couple of circles and half moons. Colour those bits in black, leaving the reflections black. And just little flicks for eyelashes. Little button nose. A happy mouth. Now, as I said, a smaller body, definitely not in proportion with the head. Little thumbs up. And another one. I'm going to give her a skirt with pleats, so they're overlapping lines like this. Then her legs down like this. And little feet turning in. There we go. Another quick art tip. What have these guys got? Ricky, can you make art with tin foil? OK, I choose you. Yay! What are your names? Hi, I'm Neve. Hi, I'm Jack. Nice to meet you, Neve and Jack. And where are you from? Belfast. All right, I'll just go and grab my things. OK, here we are. Got my trusty tin foil. What are you going to make, Ricky? I think I'm going to make an owl. And I'll show you how. Cool. I'm going to start by covering my piece of cardboard in glue. Do you guys like owls? I like the way they can turn their head around. Hopefully, this will help you make some head-turning art. All right, now I'm going to take the foil and I'm going to stick it over my piece of cardboard and I'm going to keep the shiny side up. There you go. Put a little bit of glue on the back just to stick down the edges. OK, so I've got my reflective surface now and I'm going to use that to sketch the drawing of my owl onto. What I'm doing now is I'm pressing into the foil and the cardboard with a pencil, kind of creating a relief picture. Just finishing the outline here. Now I'm going to glue string along the lines to add extra detail, make it look really 3D. And I'm going to use a brush here just because you get a finer line. So it's a little bit fiddly, but I'm just going along and gluing string along the lines that I've drawn with the pencil. So what would you call an owl if you had one? I would probably call mine Sir Hootsalot. Sir Hootsalot? Uh, yeah, that makes sense. The tootsie's done. Finally, I'm going to put in Sir Hootsalot's beak. Uh, I'd like to point out that Sir Hootsalot's first name is Sandra. So I need to cover this picture again in another layer of foil. Now I can wait for it to dry, or I could use some ninja skills. What do you reckon? Use the ninja skills. Ninja skills it is. <laughs> Ninja skills. Now it's ready for another layer of foil. So I'm just going to start pasting on the PVA glue again. Now I can put over my second layer of foil. Using my fingers, I'm just going to push the foil into all of the gaps. Now as I'm pushing down on the string, 
the pitch is starting to appear through the foil. And then to get into the tighter nooks and crannies, you can use a cotton bud. The reason I've done two layers is that if I accidentally tear this layer of foil, it still looks good underneath. All right, I've pushed in all the gaps that I can now. I'm going to add a little bit more detail with a pencil. I think really giving nice feathers on his belly. Now I've got two layers of foil on here. This pencil's leaving really nice lines. I'm going to put a little bit of detail on the face now. There we are. I think it's ready for a final finishing touch. I've got some black boot polish here. And with a piece of tissue, I'm going to rub it all into the gaps and the grooves that I've made. So the boot polish is accentuating all of the detail that I've made. And in some of the areas where the foil is ripped and you can get through to the string, it's really thick and black and it gives it a nice bit of contrast across the picture. All right, I think that's it. You guys ready to see it? Yes. yes. What do you think of this? It's, it's amazing, off. Ricky. What would you give it out of 10? It's a 10! I'll accept that score. I think it's so good, it deserves a frame. There we are. Thanks for your suggestion, guys. You've been brilliant.